Hello, this is um, Dr. Claire Gilbray from Cognitive Sports Therapy and Fiona Walker. And this is um, our time to talk slot on a Thursday, nearly said Friday. Um, and I'm really pleased to introduce Fiona. Fiona and I are all friends. And actually, this is just an opportunity for us to catch up, which is really nice. But um, I thought it would be really helpful to bring Fiona on um, because you are doing your PhD in alcohol and behaviours around alcohol and I know that I certainly have been seeing quite a lot of patients who have been struggling with alcohol you know I guess we're blaming COVID a bit on that but behaviour around alcohol has changed some people have said yeah. that they kind of drank too much at the beginning and then managed to kind of bring it back to kind of normal drinking but then a lot of people who seem to have been stuck with increased alcohol intake and I was just really keen to hear what you have been studying and with all your research, what where, yeah, what we can learn from you. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yes, um, yeah, I'm doing a PhD, I'm doing my doctoral studies at the University of Sussex and it is looking at specifically at behavior and how we can change behavior around alcohol. Um, and uh, it's been interesting during the COVID pandemic because um, as um, Dr. Claire has said, a lot of behavior around drinking has changed. Um, yes, it's um, generally my research is focused on the gap in knowledge around alcohol because so many people actually don't know. They don't know how many units we should be drinking a week. And if they do know how many units we should be drinking a week, which is no more than 14, um, and you don't have to drink 14, you can drink <laughs> up to 14. Um, but a lot of people don't know that. And if they do know that, they don't actually know what constitutes a unit. Like, what does a unit of alcohol actually look like? Um, and how many drinks is that? And um, that causes a lot of confusion for people. Um, and I think and it's changed some... a bit. Sorry, because it was, mm -hmm. it, it was different guidance for male and female, but they've changed it to be the same for men and women now, isn't it? I think a lot of people are still in the world where they think as a man that they can be drinking more than as a female. That's right. And, it's, um, and, and it doesn't make sense, I think, to a lot of people because they think, well, how can a really big man dr not drink as much, you know, or not be able to drink more than a, a smaller female? But it is based on research and looking at where is the lowest risk of drinking so if you drink up to 14 units a week you're still within that low risk threshold so keeping there is no i think people will have seen the headlines recently that there is no safe limit of alcohol consumption but if you want to minimize your risks then up to 14 units spread across three or more days so not in one night either um is the safest amount to drink and a lot of people don't know that. If you have you know, any other food or drink item, you can find out more on the packaging about that than you can on any alcoholic drink. So the regulations around food and drink in this country are really high. So we have nutritional information that has to go on there. A lot of the time, you know, all the calorie information. Um, yeah. However, on drinks, we don't need to, you know, we don't know that. We don't know how many calories are in our drink. We don't always know how many units are in our drink so as you say it's 14 and that was changed in 2016 so it's actually five years a ago, long time ago now still, isn't it the labeling and the packaging hasn't been updated and that's mainly because our government does not mandate in law that that alcohol companies have to put anything on their packaging so they um that means that that they can just do what they want to do they self-regulate essentially there's a lot of cause for that to change but it does mean that people don't necessarily know how much they should be drinking and during studies have shown that during the pandemic people as you say have been drinking more um around 49 percent in my survey were drinking more than they usually drink so that's you know we're talking okay. almost half of people drink more than they normally drink and around um I found also that 25% of people were drinking more than the 14 units as well. So, you know, they're, they're drinking more than they drink usually, but that might still be within that 0 to 14 units a week. But 25% of people that were surveyed were actually drinking more than 14 units. And even more worryingly, 20% of people were drinking more than 30 units. Sorry, yes, more than 30 units a week. So, you know, you're talking double the Gosh, amount of yeah so it's, it's a lot and it's it is heavy drinking that is the problem 
you know, in the UK, it's, you know, a smaller percentage of people who are drinking really heavily. But I think what we've seen is that more people who consider themselves kind of more normal drinkers, you know, drinking within safe limits are, it's gradually creeping up. So it's time to kind of be really aware of what can we drink and how can we cut back. And most people are still drinking for pleasure, you know, 65% of people drinking for pleasure. But around 45% um, of people said that it was for de to de-stress because this has obviously been a hugely stressful period um, for everybody for different reasons, um, whether that's because you're homeschooling or for work worries or so on, or just that your routine has completely changed. So I think they found that in the UK that people are drinking earlier in the day, particularly people working from home. It's much easier to pour your glass of wine at five o'clock than it is at, you know, maybe 7.30, 8 o'clock in the evening when you finally get home after a commute. So I think that's yeah. some that people can do practically to change and to think about drinking less is to push back that time um, yeah. when that drink happens because that reduces the amount of hours that somebody's drinking for. So that is, you know, a, an easier way to cut back, you know, or an easy small tweak that you can do. Yeah, um, because that's one of the reasons that more alcohol has crept into people's lives. And I guess I, I mean, I, I see people who are struggling with their mood and, you know, the, there's a really clear link, isn't there, between alcohol mm -hmm. and what it's doing to our mood. So although we think it's de-stressing us, it's actually increasing our stress and it's increasing anxiety and it's making us more depressed and it's making us not sleep. And then we've obviously got kind of things to do with our livers in there. What, what else are we mm -hmm damaging when we're drinking beyond that 14 units so, what are they basing it on yeah so what people um are, what is a very um not very well understood is the link between um alcohol and cancer which is um there are links to certain cancers including throat cancer breast cancer um uh, bowel cancer is in there as well so there are certain cancers that haven't been linked to alcohol but a lot of cancers have been linked to alcohol um, and a lot of people, only around 10% of people are aware of that when, you know, when people ask, do you know how, um, if alcohol causes cancer? But there are causal links there. Um, yeah, as you say, mental health. And a big one, I think, at the moment, and interestingly, during a pandemic, is that it can reduce your immunity as well. So when you want your immune system to be really strong and healthy, actually, the more you drink, the more likely you are to affect your immune system. And this is in particular with respiratory health. So when we're talking about, you know, a virus, like yeah. flu viruses, or a coronavirus, then, you know, your respiratory health can be really, um, uh, your ability for your immune system to fight those sorts of respiratory infections can infections can be affected. So, um, so that's been something that I've been testing out messages with immunity to have a look at how yeah. do people respond when they understand that um, alcohol drinking too much alcohol can affect their immunity. And actually what I found is that that's a really effective message because it, it's had a great greater effect on people's motivation to stick to the drinking guidelines than any of the other messages about liver disease or so on. And one of the reasons... Yeah, one of the reasons that we think this is, is that um, there's kind of um, over time this natural, um, people become a bit, a bit talking about immunity, I'm using using it in a different context, but they become immune to messages about liver yeah. disease, and heart disease, because they think, well, everything gives you these horrible diseases. So yeah. there is a factor when people get new information, that yeah. means that they will be more likely to pay attention to that information. And particularly mm. if that information relates to a broader socio-cultural context. So, for example, when mental health is all over the media and then you understand that alcohol can affect your mental health, you're more likely to connect those two things. So when COVID is all over the media and we then understand that alcohol can affect your immunity, then that message will have more resonance, resonance for people. So that's quite yeah. um, an interesting finding and then something to think about communicating Definitely. to people and giving them that information and, it, and again just I'm really aware of your time and keeping this short but um have, have you done anything around kind of other little um ways we can motivate people to um reduce drinking like like that thing of t drinking your first drink later on in the night is there anything that else that's yeah. been shown to be effective 
And the other thing, and Drink Aware had a big campaign about this, is to nominate drink-free days. So have certain days okay. in the week where you absolutely don't drink. Um, that you can, there's so many great alcohol-free drinks actually out there at the moment. So it's a burgeoning market. So if you search in any way, even the sort of um, bars now are selling a lot more alcohol-free drinks. Um, so pick those days that are going to be alcohol-free days and try to stick to those so that you're only drinking on certain days of the week. And as and the one I said earlier as well, push back your first drink time. Um, and the standard advice of trying to drink water in between as well, you know, to keep hydrated yeah. between those drinks. Um, I actually, I know I've spoken to you, Claire, about this before, but I have these um, cups um, that are marked with alcohol units. Actually, I'm going to take a little trip through because I forgot to bring one with me. <laughs> but um, if any of your patients or anybody is interested in receiving one of these cups, I actually have quite a lot of these um, going spare at the moment. So I can okay. send you I can send you a batch. Um, and they are marked with units of alcohol. So it's not that you would necessarily want to drink drink out of these because they're not <laughs> necessarily nice to drink out of but they can be quite a useful measure so yeah. that you can actually see I mean because the thing is a lot of people have been drinking at home rather than drinking in without bars a measure. obviously yeah. out without a measure and we do know that free poured drinks are generally more alcoholic contain a lot more alcohol than a drink than a measure in a bar so if you're in a bar ask for single measures instead of double measures but if you're at home um, being able to measure your alcohol is a really useful way to do that as well. So if you have a little spirit measure of 25 ml, that's fine. But a lot of people don't realize, you know, they yeah. have these really massive wine glasses now. Get a yeah. bottle of wine, plug it out in Two there, glasses, and that's it, go yeah. on. Glasses in one. So drink out of a smaller glass, that's one tip. Yeah. And, um, yeah, if you can find a way to measure, and Claire, I can send you a box of these. But... Um, they, uh, the, the, you know, that's definitely better as well. So smaller glasses, I mean, um, makes a big difference. You can get some really nice smaller glassware that have 125 mil, which is your actual standard um, glass of wine, which is a lot smaller than a lot of us would be drinking. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much for coming on. Just stay there for two seconds. So I get a quick chat with you afterwards. Okay. But um, if anyone's got any questions, please just post afterwards and then I can ask um, Fiona um, her advice if you've got any questions. Um, and we'll be back next week um, at the same time and the same place. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Thank